this is Gary Pinnell with Bible-Christian.org and we're going to be looking at uh, Acts chapter 24 today but uh, before we do that I'd like for you to remember that if you're reading through the Bible in the year start on today's date and you should be looking at Exodus uh, 30 through 31 and Psalm 44 now, location is a little different from where I normally had, so I don't know how the transmission is going to be, but we'll do the best job that we can. I'm at a youth camp with, uh, we brought our kids from the Christian school that are in high school, not all of them, but some of them, and we're actually here in Portland, Oregon uh, this morning. So, I'm going to go ahead and look at chapter 24 in Acts as we've been going through this book and let's see where let's start reading a little bit here please now after five days Ananias the high priest came down with the elders and a certain orator named Tertullius these gave evidence to the governor against Paul and when he was called upon, Tertullius began his accusation, saying, Seeing that through you we enjoy great peace and prosperity is uh, being brought to this nation by your foresight. We accept it always and in all places, most noble Felix, with all thankfulness. All right, so this is a, a lawyer's lawyer. <laughs> he is uh, complimenting the governor, uh, the one that they're going to be trying Paul in front of. And so he starts off with his flattery, so to speak. And here then um, we'll see what happens. Um, verse four, nevertheless, not to be tedious to you any further. Hello, Esther. It's good to see you on. Uh, I beg you to hear by your courtesy a few words from us. Okay. So, as, as I mentioned earlier, we're at camp right now, and I'm seeing if we can still put the broadcast on. I have to be kind of quiet because everyone else is at, asleep, uh, but I uh, wanted to share this with you. So we're in Acts chapter 24, and Paul is uh, there on trial, but uh, Tertullius is a uh, prosecuting attorney, as we call it here in court, and he is laying his case out against Paul, which the Jewish people really don't have a case, but against him, but especially before uh, the Romans. But we want to see what he and others have to say. So Paul is very polite uh, to these people in court. And then uh, he says that the lawyer goes on to say that he doesn't want to be uh, take a long time or anything, so he's being polite too uh, in court. For we have found this man a plague, so he's speaking for the Jewish people, a creator of dissensions among all the Jews throughout the world, and a ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes. Okay. Hi, Emmanuel. It's good to see that you're on. So he says that Paul is like... Uh, a ringleader throughout the world and uh, the sect of the Nazarenes. Well, uh, they call them Nazarenes because that's where Jesus was from Nazareth. And so they're following him, the man from Nazareth, which is true, Jesus was from Nazareth. And uh, Paul was actually telling people in all the known world of that time. and. Yes, Emmanuel. Good morning, and the Lord bless you guys, wherever you are. Okay, so I'm here at camp and doing the best we can to get the Word of God out. 
And so I appreciate you uh, listening and we'll do what we can here to see if the internet continues. Um, we have um, then the lawyer goes on, the prosecuting attorney against Paul and says, but the, okay. um, he even tried to profane the temple and we seized him and wanted to judge him according to our law. Okay. Well, profaning the temple, that was not actually true because Paul was just there fulfilling a uh, vow that he had made where he had cut his hair off and now it had grown out and he was fulfilling his vow. Uh, they did have some uh, proselytes there to Judaism uh, or either uh, others that had received the Lord but they were not in any way profaning the temple as they thought. They thought there might be some Gentile in there and the, and the Jewish place. There was a place where Gentiles could be. So uh, they weren't brought into where the Jews wouldn't allow Gentiles to be. Anyway, he's being accused of that for one thing. And then they make their case that they say, and, um, but the commander, uh, Lysias, came by and with great violence took him out of our hands, commanding his accusers to come to you. By examining him yourself, you may ascertain all these things of which we accuse him. Hmm. And the Jews also assented, maintaining that these things were so. So the lawyer speaking, he's very eloquent as a lawyer. He's very practiced, you can tell that. But then uh, the Jews are agreeing with him. Oh yes, this is what Paul did. Uh, he did these things. Well, Paul is going to have to defend himself, but he knows that won't be too hard because he didn't do any things that they claim that he did. Um, and then Paul, so he's very careful how he speaks as well. Then Paul, after the governor had nodded to him to speak, answered, answering, inasmuch as I know that you have been for many years a judge of this nation, I do the more carefully answer for myself because you may ascertain that it is no more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem to worship. Okay. And they neither found me in the temple disputing with anyone, nor inciting the crowd, either in the synagogues or in the city, nor can they prove the things of which they now accuse me. Yes, I'm sure <laughs> right now it's hard maybe to get the uh, internet uh, because I'm at a, a place that it's not at our house, but a distance away from the internet. So we're doing the best we can here, people. And anyway, the, the thing is that Paul was making it clear that he really hadn't broken any laws. And he was just going to clear that up and to share that uh, with them but the Lord is going to lead him on to say some other things as well but he said nor can they prove the things of which they now accuse me but this I confess to you that according to the way and that's what Christianity was called the way all right uh, because Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the father but by me and that's in john 14 6 and so they started calling the christians the way okay which they call a sect all right they call it a, a sect would mean more uh shoot it off or break off of something else like judaism uh, but also it has kind of a, a negative connotation 
in this sense. Um, so I worship the God of my fathers, believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets. So they uh, couldn't accuse Paul of not teaching the law and the prophets because he was. I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept that there will be a resurrection of the dead, both of the just and the unjust. This being so, I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and men. Now after many years, I came to bring alms and offerings to my nation. So they had collected an offering uh, for the poor people and the famine that was going on at that time, in the midst of which some Jews from Asia found me purified in the temple, neither with a mob nor with tumult. And they ought to have been here before you to object if they had anything against me, or else let those who are here themselves say if they found any wrongdoing and uh, uh, while I stood before the council, unless it is for this one statement which I cried out, stating, standing among them, concerning the resurrection of the dead, I am being judged by you this day. But when Felix heard these things, having more accurate knowledge of the way, he adjured, adjourned the proceedings and said, when Lysias, the commander, comes down, I will make a decision on your case. So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have liberty and told him not to forbid any of his friends to provide for or visit him. So we believe this is we believe this is when Paul was able to have Luke come and to uh, write down things that he needed to write down about the book of Acts and also to confirm other things that uh, with Paul and so Luke was with them and he's got an accurate account of what's been going on so let's continue on and uh, it says uh, so they couldn't prove anything because Paul showed them no I hadn't I didn't do any of the things that you said that I did that was against the law but this I confess to you that according to the way which they call a sect so I worship the God of my fathers believing all things which are written in the law and in the prophets I have hope in God which they themselves also accept that there will be a resurrection of the dead both of the just and the unjust that's why he had shouted out in the uh, the group of Sanhedrin because uh, those that remember the Sadducees are sad because they don't believe in the resurrection uh, but uh, and that's a play on words so you can remember who they are but the others the Pharisees they did believe in heaven they believed in hell they believed in angels they believed in the Old Testament and so he was speaking to them and that's where the dissension was made but now he's able to go on and share more with them in this court case. And we see here. So he says, I have hope in God, which they themselves also accept, that there will be a resurrection of dead, both of the just and the unjust. This being so, I myself always strive to have a conscience without offense toward God and men, now, after many years, I came to bring alms and offerings to my nation, in the midst of which some Jews 
from Asia, the ones that always chased him around everywhere and tried to stop the gospel from getting out, found me purified in the temple, neither with a mob nor with tumult. He was just going about his business in the temple. And they ought to have been here before you to object if they had anything against me. Or else let those who are here themselves say if they found any wrongdoing in me. No, there was nothing there that they could prove that Paul was doing wrong according to the Jewish nation or in this court case that they have against him. And the Lord says in another place that uh, I'll be ready always to give an answer of the hope that is within you with meekness and fear. And that's what Paul is doing right here. And so he's going on and he's saying, unless it is for this one statement, which I cried out standing among them concerning the resurrection of the dead, I am being judged by you this day. You see, the, all he's doing is telling the truth about heaven and hell and about there is a resurrection to come and the way that Jesus rose from the dead and he is alive and he is the Messiah and so on. But when Felix heard these things, having more accurate knowledge of the way, he adjourned the pro uh, proceedings and said, when Lysias, the commander, comes down, I will make a decision on your case. So he commanded the centurion to keep Paul and to let him have a liberty and told him not to forbid any of their, his friends to provide for or visit him. So now Luke and all the others would be free to come. And he's like under house arrest there. So they haven't proved anything against him. So he's not really... Uh, being judged for anything and so they're being very kind to him and after some days when Felix came with his wife Drusilla who was Jewish he sent for Paul and heard him concerning the faith in Christ and so it's not as if these kings hadn't heard something about Christ they had and now Paul is being able to share with them more specifically verse 25 now as he reasoned about righteousness self-control and judgment to come Felix was afraid and answered go away for now when I have a convenient time I will call for you mm. you see Felix is under conviction his wife Drusilla is a Jewish person and uh, she believed all of the Old Testament, I'm sure. And now, here, uh, the Lord is speaking to Felix and uh, convicting him of sin, showing him the need of salvation, showing him that Jesus did really rise from the dead. And so, he's under conviction. He says, well, come read another day, more convenient day. Well, you know what? We don't know if he ever got another convenient day. Bible says now is the day of salvation so we need to receive him while, while there is time and so let's see what Paul says then meanwhile he also hoped that money would be given him by Paul you see their underlying Herod and others um, from John the Baptist and others, they're thinking they'll get money from them. Uh, they don't even know what the spiritual life is all about. Meanwhile, he also hoped that money would be given him by Paul that he might uh, release him. Therefore, he sent for him more often and conversed with him. So it's not as if these guys are not getting the gospel. It's just that their motive is wrong. But after two years, Portius Festus succeeded Felix, and Felix, wanting to do the Jews a favor, left Paul and uh, Paul bound. So I don't really believe that Felix ever got another 
opportunity really to receive the Lord, he should have taken that opportunity except for peer pressure and all that sort of thing he didn't want to say probably uh, in front of them. Our time is just about up, so we're going to have a closing word of prayer. But all of these details are historical and can be checked out, uh, places, times, and so on. And so that's what the Word of God is. It is a very factual, honest book, and we need to accept that and accept Christ as our Lord and Savior while we have time. Let's pray. Thank you, God, for this time that we've had together. We pray that you'll speak to every heart as your word has gone forth. We pray all these things, Father, with thanksgiving. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All right, the Lord bless you, and we'll see you, God willing, tomorrow. All right, thank you for your prayers as well.